Hey guys, and welcome to another Bob Ross and the Art of Guitar video. So, one of the questions I get asked is about how I make a living. And here's the answer. I make my living by performing and by teaching. I teach at the college level. I'm an adjunct at Mount St. Joseph University. And then I also teach around the area. Uh, Westchester Academy of Music um, is, the, is the other primary uh, place that I do teach. Uh, I do Skype lessons as well, and I do have lessons that um, maybe some of you have come across on musiclessons.com. So one of the things that I want to discuss is for those of you who are thinking about pursuing a life as a musician, you know, as an educator performer, uh, I like to kind of give a little bit of a rundown of what goes on, at least for me. So, the the big thing is that um, let me let me kind of start back a little bit in the beginning here. So I've always had a big obsession with the guitar, and when I was in high school, first learning to play, I didn't have any music lessons, and it was just me trying to figure things out by ear, watching VHS tapes to see what I could do, and of course, dial up wasn't the friendliest when you were trying to look up. Uh, some information on uh, guitar and learning how to play songs and a big influence for me was Metallica so I was trying to look up music for Metallica go to click the page about 30 minutes of waiting for one page to load and you know at that point I was like well forget it I'll just figure it out try to figure it out by ear so for me the guitar was always something that took a big um, part of my time because I was so obsessed with it. I would come home and at least five or six hours having the guitar in my hand every day. And I never got tired of it, never got burned out by it. Uh, and maybe that was because I didn't have a teacher that was showing me anything particular that wasn't of interest to me. But um, I do think that maybe it would have been great to have that, uh, you know, as part of my um, foundation. That way I didn't have to go back and learn some of the things that I should have known, um, you know, at a later stage in my development. So, um, for me, it was, it was no question at that point when I started playing guitar that that's what I wanted to do. So, th that's, that's a huge thing, having that... Uh, I guess att attraction that obsession with it is is uh, a huge thing for me. So I didn't I didn't know what else to do. That that was the big thing for me. And, and of course, leading into performing as well. So usually this is what happens for me. Uh, when I first got out of grad school, uh, the big thing was looking for gigs and teaching opportunities. And I lined up some of those things. And then uh, from there, it was just maintaining, constantly keeping in touch with people and trying to gain more students. So the big thing coming out of college was to line up performance opportunities as well as trying to find um, potential teaching opportunities as well. And I found those things. So if, you know, for me, a normal day now uh, because I have a family, and that's something that you have to consider. If you don't have a family right now, if you're thinking about having a family, keep that in mind, because some of the things that I would have done prior to having a son is a little bit different. Like now, uh, there are venues that I think about wanting to reach out to and possibly try to book a date, but when I weigh it against the bigger picture... For me right now to travel hours away to perform, uh, to potentially be away from my family at this stage right now doesn't make a lot of sense for me. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's a bad thing if you do that, but for me that's, that's not really an option at this point. So my days usually consist of finding performance opportunities and also trying to um, produce more more content, to produce more educational uh, content, um, to also do a lot of research. So having a son, and I'm here with him during the day, um, I'm balancing pretty much on a daily basis, reaching out to venues, uh, checking back with venues to try to get uh, possible performance dates lined up. Um, trying to make sure that I have a group lined up for those performances. 
uh, composing original music, uh, fitting in practice time, um, and this is all on the music side of it for right now. Uh, also trying to study more to figure out maybe lacks and what I, you know, a, a lack of knowledge in something that I want to know more about. Something that maybe students uh, bring awareness to that I didn't know that um, maybe I was lacking in a bit. So, you know, looking for new ways also to um, better teach concepts, ideas to students. That That's a huge thing as well. Um, also working on topics to um, address on uh, social media platforms and and also doing what what I'm doing right now you know having ideas and topics to discuss for uh, the YouTube channel um, also I, I you know have a blog um, that's I haven't been as dedicated to to posting on but there's a um, a new uh, blog that I'm about ready to start up that addresses some of these uh, issues as well. Uh, so, so those are things that are, are a big component, um, as well as you know trying to line up, especially in the online. N now that you know I can reach out to so many people, is is looking for potential opportunities and teaching through Skype. Uh, creating lessons for musiclessons.com, you know, um, figuring out new things that I could produce for that. And besides the things that I'm working on uh, for the music side, then uh, there's also the other side of being a parent and addressing the needs of my son, uh, cleaning up the many messes that take place in this house every day, multiple times a day. Uh, taking care of, you know, the normal everyday activities that people do, mowing the yard, uh, cleaning up the house, uh, fixing dinner, fixing breakfast for my family, and my wife, and my son, because that means a lot to me to, to be able to contribute in that way. Um, having a wife, understanding that uh, there are performances that I, I, like I said before, that I don't want to do because that would take more time away from the, the limited time that at, that I do get to see my wife because my wife and I work opposite schedules. I teach in the evening, she teaches during the day, we trade off and then when I get home you know it's about time to go to bed so we don't always get to see each other uh, as much as, as what we would like at, as at this point in our life. Uh, there's also like I said the performance side of it where you're lining up gigs and you know, on the weekends, that's usually when I perform. You have to think about some of these things about whether, you know, the education and the performance side. I have to turn down opportunities to perform if they conflict too much with my teaching schedule. So there's been opportunities to go out and perform during the weekdays, but I can't necessarily do those because then I'm losing out on a week of, um, you know, getting to see my students again to be able to make sure that they're working on the material, that they're understanding what they need to understand, as well as, and yes, this is a big thing to think about, is that I'm also balancing, well, if I do have an opportunity to do a performance compared to the teaching, uh, the financial balance of that, like what's what's going on, you know, what's the bigger picture of that? How's that going to affect, um, you know, the end of the month uh, balance of, of uh, you know, what I'm making per month. So you got to think about those things. Uh, trying to maintain friendships, uh, there's, there's honestly, there's, you know, I'm an introvert, and uh, if I didn't hang around people, you know, that's that's not a huge deal to me. Just I, It's just because of, uh, I guess, that fact, my personality of I'm okay being by myself. But I do like to connect with people. Uh, the people that I grew up around uh, live three hours away from here. And we see each other, you know, two times at least a year, maybe three times a year. I've made some friends here and I like to connect with them as well. Um, but you, you, it, it's, it, it's all a balancing act of what are you going to do? Um, you know, do you... Uh, schedule time with friends, and if you do that, and I've had this happen many times, schedule time to meet with friends, and then that's when it seems like I start getting called for gigs. And, of course, I've already committed, so I turned that down. <clears throat> so, if, you know, if you're looking to do 
this full on, there's, there's a lot to think about. And you have to be smart about those decisions um, and, and think about the priorities and <clears throat> what the bigger goal is, uh, what you're trying to accomplish in, in this life of doing this, why you're choosing to do this. And um, also, if, if you have gone to school for this and then you have the, let's say you went to school for this and you racked up debt, then you have to consider that as well. Uh, yeah, it's great to go out and perform, but if the financial part's going to come in, and yes, you could, you know, choose to do something that's outside of music as a day job to um, provide income. Uh, for me, I I am strictly based on performances and teaching. That's that's what I do. That's how I make a living uh, doing this. And, um, you know, which is providing me the opportunity to have a house and, and a car and, you know, to, to buy things. Because sometimes I think the perception is that being a musician, uh, you may not be doing too well and there's no way that you can do those things. But yeah, you can. Uh, you, you have to be smart about things and you have to, um, you have to prioritize and you, you have to work on um, aspects of the financial side of budgeting. Um, and, and you have to be aware and, and hopefully, you know, during, you know, for this video series, I want to talk more about these things coming up as well. But y there's things that are not necessarily brought to um, your attention when you go to school for this, as far as how to deal with 1099s, um, booking gigs, uh, how how to uh, you know if you went solely into performance like uh, you know as far as like teaching methods like how are you approaching all these things there's so many things that get left that, you know they're kind of undone uh, uh, that that are not uh, taken care of uh, necessarily when you go to college um, and it's things that you have to continue to study outside of that which also reminds me um, you know also uh, doing research on trying to keep up with what's going on because you know you might not like all the social media stuff you might not like where things are going with technology but that's too bad you know I for the longest time didn't have a cell phone uh, I wanted to stay away from social media platforms but you know what if you start limiting yourself in that way then you have to accept the fact that your opportunities may be a little bit more limited so you know, I, I hope that provides a little bit of insight for some of you who are, are interested in pursuing this type of thing, uh, you know, doing music uh, full on. It's just a few thoughts that I've been thinking about lately. And if there's any questions, please feel free to ask or if there's comments, make sure to leave a comment below uh, because these type of things are important to discuss. There's so many um opportunities online to see, you know, how how do you play scales on the guitar? How how do you work on uh, comping? I mean, and those are things that I like to talk about too. But what about the other side of it? For those of you who want to do it more um, as a profession and not just a hobby, right? So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like I said, I hope this helps. Leave your questions and comments below. Please feel free to uh, subscribe to this. That would be a big help uh, and share this. Thanks again, guys, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.